In 2018, we returned to Kaufman Cove for one more adventure. We'd made a lot of trips north to the cove since our first in 2001 and witnessed a lot of changes over the years. But in spite of the passing of time, it was still possible when the sunlight hit just right to catch a glimpse of the old rigging shack. If you squinted, it was as if nothing had changed. Nope, the gas pump had not been moved to the other side of the road and still standing guard was old Grizz, the liquor store dog, walking his post by the store itself. But then reality returned and the past was indeed history. Sadly, one of the victims of history was the Ocean View Campground. The place we had camped for so many years was now a part of the past but we could remember the past well. Back to our first meeting, Dee Dee Jeffries. It was our two year anniversary. We tie dyed, had a beautiful day tie dyeing here at the park. We'll look forward to seeing you next year so that you can catch all the silvers and the halibut and all that good stuff. <laughs> so there you have it, from Dee Dee herself. <laughs> Like our adventure in town, it was easy to look into the abandoned RV park and see our trailer Tonto, where we had last parked it a couple of years ago. I'm sure the little buck still grazed beside our camp with a million dollar view of Clarence Strait just outside the front door. The same beautiful view we'd looked at from our first days in the park with Steve Benninger. He don't know where I am, he's just looking around. Hmm. Why don't they get ready? Just look at those two old geezers with nothing better to do. Because there truly was nothing better to do than soak up Alaska and catch hell of it. When we weren't fishing, we enjoyed the 4th of July parades and yearly festivals in town, often running into Dee Dee. In the center of the RV park was a bunkhouse available for campers to use. In 2007, there was an addition to the park. Dee Dee and husband Chuck built a triplex that eventually became the Bears Den Lodge. But more about that story later. The park was a bustling place. We caught a lot of fish and enjoyed the view for several years until 2017 when the campground was closed forever and the bunkhouse here behind us was doomed. The bunkhouse stood in the deserted campground that had once hosted us and was the source of so many memories, really good memories. We all decided to view the details of its final day from the Bears Den Lodge. We had a great ringside seat of the old ghost town as the building awaited destruction. The bunkhouse originally was a logging float bunkhouse. Mm -hmm. So it was in Port Alice and um, Portage Bay and several other places in southeast Alaska before it came to Kaufman Cove. Mm -hmm. Then they pulled it up on the beach and it was a bunkhouse here while there was a logging camp for I don't know how many years. Many, many, many years. There's Dee Dee. She got her camera too. <laughs> oh my God, watch out with that truck. I know. Ooh. Oh, that's not water in there. Oh, action. Mr. Preminger, you getting this? I am. Yes, yes, sir. Whoa. Follow that one, mate. <laughs> right. Okay. I'm gonna kind of get out of there. Oh. Well, here oh, we go. Like this that. is the big hoorah. Do you want to move the Hitachi first? Yeah. Where's, where's, my, where's my lighter? It's diesel. It'll burn slow. You want? Okay. Yep. okay. <laughs> 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 got it. We got it, Dee Dee.
Well, it's too bad we don't have a drum for a drum roll. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he lit the, okay, he lit the rag on the thing. What a process. Fire. <laughs> I'm glad I don't have my hooded sweatshirt on yet. <laughs> when they closed down the logging camp, they were selling all the buildings. So we bought that building oh. and moved it to the so RV fun. park. Okay. Yeah. And we only had, it that was like, okay, you have two days to get this out of here. So it never was on a really firm pad. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But yeah, so it served many years here as a bunkhouse. We took one bedroom out, made it a kitchen living room, and there she went. Wow. Yeah. I saw that. I saw the, we saw the inside of it. Yeah. It used to go, he told us to get books or something. From yeah, there there's anytime. four books in there. But yeah, so um, it's had a, quite the history. Was on yellow cedar logs. I think they were still there when they burned it. Hmm. Underneath it. I, we saw, I think last year, the old post office building, the... Yes, the, it's motor home or whatever that was. There. It was just a little shed. <laughs> yeah. And it's now at the end of the street and it's someone's work room. Oh, okay. This tool room. Okay. Um, but that yeah. that was there during those times too, right? Yeah. Logging. Yeah. Yeah. I was here when it was a bunkhouse originally, but it's not for a lot of, you know, I didn't spend a lot of time here. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Cool. My house okay. was a duplex okay. for the logging company. Oh, okay. They had to take the bridge apart to get it over here because it was a little wider than the bridge. So they had to take the railing off. Wow. <laughs> wow. They moved it over here. It made it from where it was downtown because it used to be Ken and Michelle's house mm -hmm. to here with only one broken window. Wow. I know. We thought That's that awesome. was phenomenal. As the last of the building blazed, the backhoe dumped more debris on it, making a smoke cloud visible clear out to the triplets. We watched as the fire completed its work. When it was done, the bunkhouse no longer stood. Soon there was just smoldering rubble where it had been for 20 years. But wounds in Alaska heal quickly, and even as the site cooled, deer returned. This doe and her fawn inspected the site, accepted it as it was now, and moved on. As we all have. Well, we got the bunkhouse burned down. Now we had one other little matter to work on. You see, Dave had some friends visiting him. Susan, Lisa, Robert, and Russell. And right away, the ladies hooked up with Darcy, and they went berry picking and did some sightseeing and gold mining with moderate success. And they also managed to get in a little fishing. And they had a lot of success at that. A hundred pound halibut is a big one in anybody's book. Holy mother of mercy. Don't drop it on the ground. We're going to wash <laughs> it off anyway. Okay. On the table. The so, the next day, the guys were looking to even the score. 
We headed out early and made our way past Rose Island out to a secret halibut hole called the Snags. The boys were looking to pull up even with the girls, but a hundred pounder's a tough critter to beat. We got to the fishing hole and started rigging up with 10 aught circle hooks, 8 ounces of weight, and a chunk of pink salmon for bait. Now, fishing for halibut isn't exactly what you'd call hard work or something needing a special technique. It just requires persistence. You just got to stay at it. It wasn't long until Russell hooked a fish. What we want to hear, fish on. Is it a heavy fish? Is it doing he he head shakes? You got head shakes going? But what kind of fish was it? Oh, yeah. That's a hell. He's got a halibut. Yeah, it just pulled down. Took off one yep, yep, he's battling. He's doing the battle. Okay, now the question is this. Is this a harpooner or is it a gaffer? I'd say so far just a gaffer probably. He's think did you hear that, honey? He's thinking yeah. it's a gaffer. I managed to get a gaff into Russell's fish and finally hauled him aboard. Woo! That's a good size. Oh, I mean, shit. it's perfect eating size. Good job. Very good job. Back in the water. Can Yay, you? Russ. Yay. Woohoo! What do you say? 30, 40? He's 30 pounds. At I least said 20 30. at first, but he's probably no, 30. No, he's, he's a good. That's the perfect eating, oh, eating yeah. size. That's what we want. We got the spot. Woo! Russell had a 30 pounder in the box and now it was back to work. Fish on, Robert's got one. Yep, oh, yep, that's a hell of it. Oh, oh, oh yes, sir. I heard that. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Head shake. What's you, it do? Make a noise? Um, the, the the line, just the oh. way the line goes. Shoo, shoo, shoo. When they when they head shake down. Yeah. Yeah, baby. And then it makes you work some more because he okay, takes it all the way back. If you can, when you bring him up, don't get his head out of the water because sometimes he'll come up real good until his head comes out. And the gaff is on that side. He ain't going up nowhere unless I get some more. See this thing, this reel just in here. Huh, yeah, there you go. Looks like you got a real one. He's pretty heavy. It looks pretty heavy. Let's put that out of the way. I think we'll get this out of the way. Oh, yeah. I don't think we're going to need it. Would you move this up to the end of it? Okay, bring him up slowly. He's going. That's a good, good position. Yep, perfect. Gotta get him over here. God damn it. Now, there. Okay, he's got now. He's got, all right. Woo! Now, That's a big now fish. he's gonna be pissed off, yep. Oh, oh. oh. Leader you have a big helmet. You have a huge helmet, Robert. Way to go. Hang on, hang on, you, I mean. Yeah, yeah don't. Yeah, going. but I don't think it's gonna last. No, it's okay. No, 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 you, you, got don't, need him to, now. you don't need to reel. You're good. He'll take the boys down when he gets tired, he'll come back. You got him. You're good, you're good. Woo! Good job. Woo! Yay, Yay Robert! Whoa! This is cool. This so is what we is. were after, people. Wow. That was, that was hanging just. Yeah, that's all wow. I saw. That's all that helped. Wow. Where that's scary. It? Oh, now I got... A little slack, and that's unhooked. Oh. That was. Everything that was worked. scary. That was luck. That I was luck. That, that was like, amazing that luck. That was amazing. So what are you thinking, honey? About 65, 70? No, that's more like 100. 100? Yeah, oh, my God. You want to show them in the cooler, Robert? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, hold them up and get your picture taken. Can I? Can you? you get, where do you get a hold of them? Oh, well, that's a shirt. 90 pounds. Get right where I got, and then I'll get the other side. Right up, right up under here. 
Okay. Can you, are you both gonna hold them up for a second or not? I don't think it. I don't think it's gonna work. I can't pick them up all the way. You're trying. Yeah, Robert. There it goes. Oh, holy cow. This is awesome. Perfect. Fits <laughs> right in there. Oh, okay, that, honey. Is so, that, that is so cool. That's as good as you can do. Holy cow. <laughs> okay, we got more fish to catch now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, uh, that was cool. So it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> Big cake. Holy cow. It's like moving furniture now. <laughs> Have you ever caught a fish that big before? Me? Yeah, I caught a 90 pound halibut before. You did? Yeah, maybe not. So, who caught the biggest fish? They were both over 100 pounds, so we called it a tie. The bonus was a bucket of fillets. Or maybe the real bonus was the parade the town threw for us with our luck fishing. I guess that's why they had the parade. The whole town turned out for the ceremony and no expense was spared in this lavish affair. Money flowed. We assumed the fish here swimming behind the fire truck was in our honor. It seemed fitting. Just look at that beauty. That's about the size of the ones we caught. Uh-oh, uh-oh, here we go. The candy cars are moving on to the scene, giving the little ones sugar treats. Of course, I don't suppose the kids should get them all. I guess I'll have to give the little rascals some competition. Well, hold on, here comes an old Nash tossing out more candy. I better get on that. Here now, here, here, throw some taffy this way to the old geezer. I really cleaned up, but I see Darcy's still hard at work, and I'll have to split my take with her, I guess. The eagle here really didn't care much one way or the other. <laughs>